All right, everyone. I'm right back in the slopes, Nyandaro County to be specific. And I want to show you some real dead town and all two. In fact, I'll be visiting two towns. In fact, right now I'm in the downtown of the first one. And it goes by the name the old Mawingu town. You can see the beautiful Abadeas at the back. You can call them the Blue Range Mountain. It's a super beautiful scene. And of course, I'll be getting to the small old town in a second. But in the meantime, just take your time to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Village to Town TV, a channel that is dedicated to continue showcasing beautiful villages, towns, and cities across the continent. We want to first explore the streets of the small old town and see how business is faring. It seems like a well-organized town. Well, the streets are quite empty. Apart from the few boys I just passed a few seconds ago, I feel like I'm the only person in town today. Well, I don't know what happened to business in this side of the town. It seems like no shop is open. Of course, you can see them on my right. The place seems old and deserted which is also the case for this very road. It has grass everywhere. That tells you that it is not used regularly. If you are also familiar with the tropical climate, you know that the beautiful green plants on my left are not just plants. That is thing in Nito. If you dare fall on them naked, you are as good as dead. Well, I can see more empty shops on the right. And I have noted they have the same theme colors. They are either blue and white or green and white. I don't know whether it's just a coincidence or the town's policy. I think I've spotted the first guy on the street. And just take note of his dress code. I'll be telling you more about that in a few. You can see he was on a heavy jacket and a Marvin. It's a super cold town. I have also spotted the first operating business in town. It is a portion meal. I'm told that one secret of surviving the cold mountain is eating. You just don't eat lightly here. You have to eat heavily. And you have to do it often. In fact, I'm told that you are more likely to get hungry here than in hot areas. For instance, you know the body needs a lot of energy to fight the cold, or I mean to keep warm. Well, I can see the upper side of the town is quite populated. There's a lot of activities going on there. But the town is more dead on my left. I can see an empty modern dead market from where I sit, although you cannot see it. So I want to go around the town and get into the market area since there is no entrance from here and before i get there let me give you some interesting numbers and mawingo has a total population of 3313 you can see that it's just a small town 1644 are men while 1669 are women you can see the number of women in the town is slightly higher, by about 25 people. That's a well-balanced equation as far as gender distribution is concerned. And regarding population density in the town, it is very low. In fact, there are 160 people living in a square kilometer. Well, comparing that to some towns in Kiambu County or Nairobi, you will notice that the area is sparsely populated. It is also good to note that the sub-county's population, that is Kipipiri, is shrinking for whatever reason. In fact, it is one of the few constituencies in central Kenya that has a shrinking population instead of growing. That's not according to Mr. Lone Traveler. It's according to the Kenyan Bureau of Statistics. In fact, as 2019, the population was 93,000 
855 people, while 10 years earlier, in 2009, the population was 95,338 people. Well, that's an annual population change of negative 0.16%. We'll talk more about that. But let's first explore the dead part of the town. In front is the newly built market, probably by the county government of Nyandarwa. But it's empty, as you all can see. Let me try and get closer so that I can get a nice shot. I don't know what you think about that. But it seems like the market function is a dump site in the small town. Well, that's some dead public capital right there. Since, of course, the public money was used. But for whatever reason, the money did not benefit anyone. As you can see, well, you can see some empty shops up there are in ruin. It seems like they have been abandoned for years. And funny enough, there's electricity in the town. You can also see the majestic Abadeas in the background. Beautiful scene. It also seems like we have some nice company. The Beast of Baden. They are grazing gracefully right in the middle of the town. Let me try and see whether I can capture the southern side of the town. Well, the fate is the same, pretty empty. Well, I would really want to know what happened to this part of the town. It seems like it was once busy. You can even see the kinds of investments here. There are stone-walled buildings which is not a small feat for a rural old town. And speaking of old towns, remember this town was established during the colonial era by the Hoyts, who had occupied all the Hoyt Highlands in East Africa, and they named it Mawingu, which is Swahili for clouds. Back then I'm told that there was a pyrethrum processing company right here in the town, which survived until around the 80s and early 90s. And so back then the town was thriving as the local economy was booming. And following the collapse of the Pyrethrum sector in the 90s, a better part of the town's economy caved in. Another story I heard from some local old-timers is that the nearby forest was open to the public throughout the 60s 70s, 80s, and early 90s. And so people are allowed to harvest timber and firewood, which they would ferry to Nairobi for business. And so this played a critical role in enhancing the town's growth. I'm also sure you have noted that the upper side of the town seems more busy and crowded in fact, this is a modern parking lot built by the Nyandaro County government probably about five years ago. And you can see it's quite busy. You can even see some business across the road are driving. And I know you are asking yourself why the southern side of the town is pretty dead while the upper side is driving. And I'll give you the answer. After speaking to a few old-timers immediately after getting here, I was told that in 2008, the busy Nakuru or Kalau Jambini Road, which passes through the town, was constructed. The road is just up there, some few meters from here. I hope you can see some cars passing. I'll take you there in a few. I was told that the new Tamak Road Although it opened the area, it impacted negatively some old towns in the county. And Mawingu was one of them. And this is why. When new investors came in, they were interested in purchasing and developing plots that are along the road. Well, 
that's a common thing here in Africa, especially in this part of the world, where land touching the tarmac is considered as Roti Maguta Maguta. It's highly valued and of course in high demand. And that meant that this part of the town was getting more attention than the old town. Eventually new buildings came up along the road while the old part of the town continued fading. The resorts are of course as you have seen and I'm told that if I continue with this road in this direction I'll be hitting Nairobi in less than three hours. In fact it's about 125 kilometers and if I was going on the other direction I'll be hitting Yahuru town in one hour and 23 minutes. That's according to Google map as the town is only 75 kilometers away. That tells you that we are not that far from major towns. In fact, Naivasha town is only less than 40 kilometers from here. But I want to turn around as I want to explore the upper part of the small town before we hit our next town in a few in fact, in less than two minutes, that goes by the name Tigoni. It's another pretty old town, I'm sure, but I hope it is not dying. It also has a pretty history. I'll be telling you more about that. I will also be giving you more numbers, both at the county and the sub-county levels. And remember, this is County 018, that is... Nyandaro County, which borders Muranga and Nyeri counties on the other side of the Abadeas. Nyandaro County also has a long border with Nakuru County. It also borders Kiambu County near Sokomjinga and Laikipia in Nyahururu town. You can also see the internal roads on this part of the town are not that bad, although they are not that good especially when you compare to roads in small towns in Kiambu County. We have covered many of them. And one thing for sure that we have noted is that most roads in small towns in that part of the world are tarmacked. Anyway, that was Old Mawingu Town for you. Let's meet in our next town in a few seconds. Okay everyone, welcome to Tigoni town, which is some 5 kilometers away from our first town, Mawingu, old town. The town is only on one side of the road, and we want to get to the heart of Tigoni. It's on a Sunday, around 11 a.m. There is a Sunday morning service on my left, a very active congregation. But the rest of the town is going about their business as if nothing is happening. It's a beautiful day, although a bit dull. It has just rained a few minutes ago. Some about 30 minutes. But the ground has quickly dried up. Definitely it's a beautiful old town. It's as old as they get. I can see some beautiful wooden buildings. I can also see some nice stone-walled buildings. Truth be told, this was not the case the last time I checked here. Well, I know the town seems old, but it is not as old as our first town that we visited in the video, that is the old Mawingu town, which was established by the English. That was around 1930s and 40s. But Tigoni has a different case. In fact, it was established in early 2000s 
well, I can see some very old timers are having the best time of their lives. It's a Sunday morning, and these kind don't go to church. Don't argue with me. And trust me, they know I'm right behind them. And the last thing you want is to hoot at them. In fact, the guy with the trench coat is walking like a mafia boss. Probably he owns the town. Anyway, let me just turn around. You know that Mr. Lone Traveler is not in the business of looking for trouble. I can see some pretty old wooden building in front. There is also a small joint bar on my right. You will see that in a few seconds. It's right here. Probably the old timers are just buying time so that they could hop right in. And as I was telling you, the small town was established in early 2000s. And when the pioneer built the first shop, I happened to be around, but I left shortly after. Well, the small town has grown tremendously. In fact, it has a total population of 7,070. That, of course, includes the surrounding area called Gidioro. 3,402 are men, while 3,668 are women. Total number of households, 2,018. In terms of the population density, there are 235 people living in a square kilometer. And the entire Gidioro village is 30 kilometers squared. You can also see the beautiful mountains on the background. There is another small town on the other side of the mountain called Getambushi, which has some interesting history. I think I'll take you some day if I happen to get back. Well, let me quickly check at the real estate segment before I fade out. And to get an acre of land in the area, you need about 1.5 million Kenya shillings. And it can be subdivided all the way to an eighth of an acre, which is a 50 by 100. And of course, in this part of the world, you will get a title deed for that. Most people here are farmers. Potatoes are the main cash crop. Also cabbages, peas, carrots do so well. Anyway, that was Tigoni for you, which got its name from a village in Kiambu County near the town of Limuru. I did a video about that some times ago. You can go and check it. Well, let me leave it at that. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Village to Town TV, a channel that is dedicated to continue showcasing beautiful villages, towns, and cities across the continent. Also, don't forget to like the video so that it can be recommended to as many people as possible and smash the notification bell so that every time we post, you will be among the first few people to be notified. Thank you.